Hello, you listen to Kent Richard from Coon and Hope Clergy, just outside the GPO here, as the people come back from their march. Yeah, cool, yeah. How are you doing, where are you? should be set free. One, two. Just to see the barriers here are uh, erected after the homeless, they cleared away the homeless people from Collins Street there, people are on hunger strike. There's a crowd here now, the speech will be starting very shortly. Oh, you picked it, you picked it up. I'm into the long way. Nice one. Like a snowball gathering. that they seem united in one objective and that is to undermine the liberty including the rights of free speech that this, this state guarantees to Irish people. Free speech must be regarded as the primary liberty because without free speech no other freedom could be defended or vindicated. This has been recognized in every historical period and in the first democracy of ancient Athens free speech was regarded as so essential that the Athenian lawmaker Solon made it a crime for any citizen to shirk from engaging in political controversy. In modern Ireland, it is increasingly becoming a very dangerous thing, and if government gets its way, a crime for anyone to engage in political controversy. Given our long history of oppression, this is something we as a free people cannot accept, and it is something which we will not accept. Okay, we'll hold off for a minute because I think there's some more people coming, so we just give me a couple more minutes. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. Let me just get one there as well. Can you sing far away? Thank you all for coming here. My name is Michael Leahy. I'm the chairman of the Irish Freedom Party. I would say... For our party, the protection of free speech is our absolutely non-negotiable core value. Yes. It is the main reason we come into existence as a party. As we celebrate 100 years of the foundation of a free Ireland, it is a sad reflection in our political parties that they seem united in only one objective, and that is to undermine the liberty, including the rights of free speech, that this state guarantees us of right because of our citizenship. Free speech must be regarded as the primary liberty because without free speech no other freedom can be defended or vindicated. 
This has been recognized in every historical period and in the first democracy of ancient Athens, free speech was regarded as so essential that the Athenian lawmaker Solon made it a crime for any free citizen to shirk from engaging in political controversy. In modern Ireland, it is increasingly becoming a very dangerous thing, and if the government gets it away, it will be a crime for anyone to engage in political controversy. Given our long history of oppression, this is something we as a free people cannot accept, and it is something which we will not accept. In many respects, our culture has descended into an obsession with language, and perfectly innocent people who use the wrong expression in public can have their careers ended and their lives destroyed. We have seen the careers of some of our finest journalists and thinkers ended in this fashion. It is time for us to say this has got to stop. Our political parties have become more obsessed with how people express their opinions than they are with the welfare and the difficulties and the problems of ordinary working people. Why, in the midst of a housing crisis and a cost of living crisis, is this government obsessed with putting people in prison for using the wrong pronouns, as has effectively happened with Mr. Enoch Burke? We cannot allow people like Enoch Burke to languish in prison because that's what Radio Television will do. They will forget about it and hope that we will forget about it. We will not forget about people who stand up for liberty and freedom. If our language can be destroyed and controlled, then the government can exert ultimate control over its people. That obsession with total control was well illustrated during the infamous lockdowns, which did far more harm than the virus. And unless we act now, the level of oppression we saw during the lockdowns will become the standard operating manual for this state. The proposed bill currently before the Doyle introduces for the first time into our society the twin, twin concepts of hate crime and hate speech. Does anybody think, as I do, that when you start using those terms in the context of legislation, that it brings us directly into the horrible world described by George Orwell in his novel 1984? Orwell warned us, well, that when an idea can no longer be spoken or expressed, it very quickly becomes an idea which can no longer even be thought. So we are not here just to defend free speech, we are here to defend free thought and defend our rights and dignity as human beings. I am here to say that we will never let them take that dignity from us without a fight of the most determined and bitter kind. <laughs> Protect free speech. The current bill before the doll has at least two elements that should indeed fill all of us with dread. It defines hate crime as any crime which is perceived by the receiving party as having been motivated by hate. Just think about that for a moment. Such a perception is purely subjective and can have no place in any just law. What burden of proof will be required other than someone's feelings? This is clearly a blackmailer's charter and a liar's license. It has the potential to bring the entire legal process into disrepute and will inevitably cause dissension between the disparate elements of society rather than providing harmony between them. In addition, the proposed legislation introduces a two-tier system of law with a very restricted group of designated victim classes being empowered to use the legislation to attack and suppress the free speech rights of the majority population. This can only have the effect of increasing racial and social tensions can we not see that the kinds of social division and violence that we have seen played out in America's streets over the past years are a salutary warning to us of what may arrive here if our politicians, if our politicians continue to stoke the fires of racial division and gender hate? We can't let them do that. This legislation concentrates on three main victim classes relating to race, gender, sexuality and religion. 
the documents accompanying the legislation class homophobia as a negative attitude to homosexuality. Not, mark you, a negative attitude to homosexuals. Anyone, therefore, who is concerned with their children being exposed to homosexual pornography or propaganda, as we see so often in our schools, and expresses a negative attitude to this, has the potential to face prosecution for an aggravated crime in a situation of conflict. The potential for undermining religious freedom is very obvious, and we must ask, is it not intentional? You can call these developments what you like, but please, do not call them progressive because they are not. They will bring us backwards rather than forwards. We must question whether the role of the Gardaí is going to be dramatically changed and whether its members will now be forced to become the political arm of an emergent police state. And if you want a taste of what we, that may be like, think of the lockdowns on steroids. We need on Garda Shia Khan to be just that, guardians of the peace and not enforcers of an intolerant moral code of political correctness. The lockdowns may serve as a salutary warning of what the so-called new normal, the Great Reset, where you will own nothing and you will be happy will actually be like. We must make it clear that we will not have a new normal. We will have no great recess. We will not accept the destruction of our society and the destruction of what have been in our normal methods of behavior. <laughs> Governments which seek to tyrannize people, such as within the old Soviet system, have always recognized the importance of separating people from their historical, cultural, and religious identities, and the need to destroy those elements of an historic nation. Can we not see the same forces at play in the Ireland of today, as indeed through all the states of the European Union, which has set its face so strongly against democracy and human liberty? We see Ursula von der Leyen. Go and stop. Stay quiet. We see Ursula von der Leyen going to receive an award, the Peter Sutherland Award. Is it not correct? Five more minutes. Free speech! We must let the government know that we are proud of our culture, we are proud of our history, we are proud of our roots, and we will never let government exercise tyranny over those values. In many ways, this is why the proposed hate speech legislation concentrates on racial matters. Couple this with the Agenda 2040, whereby government proposes the mass importation of up to one million persons into this country, and it becomes increasingly clear that Irish people will not be able to maintain any form of national identity into the future. Every day we see hundreds of unvetted foreign nationals being brought into this country with the purpose of replacing the Irish population and breaking the concept of national identity. Very soon you will not even be able to protest against this because to do so would be classed as hate speech. That is why legislation is being introduced now to prohibit discussion about the, the, the replacement of the native population and to imprison those who raise that issue. In the midst of a housing crisis, we propose a mass importation of people from every part of the world without any economic justification. And any person who speaks against this is described in the clapped up language of our government and our journalists as a racist, a xenophobe or worse. We must proudly proclaim that seeking to protect our nation from social and cultural disintegration is not a racist value, but a patriotic one. Our politics, our culture, have fallen prey to a set of evil ideologies. And I think the only recourse for us is to pray for the assistance of Almighty God in delivering us from the satanic agenda which has captured our government. Our politicians seem blissfully unaware of the consequences of what they are doing and simply respond to media pressure and to the orders they receive from their masters in the European Union and the globalist institutions such as the World Economic Forum. The best way we can fight this incipient tyranny is to go back to our history and to draw strength from our past. We have fought worse tyrants than these before and we chased them out of our country and we can do the same again! Time, sadly, is short. We all have a dread of what may be coming in the wake of the restrictions. We must therefore immediately move to make our voices heard in the loudest possible fashion. I firmly believe that we're on the cost of an international movement of nationalism, populism and returning power to the people. 
We see that in the United States, in Holland, in Eastern Europe, and even in China. And you can imagine what we see in China is probably a tiny fraction of what is actually happening. This country, Ireland, which has given so much to international liberty, must ride the international wave and reassert the rights of democracy and liberty against those who seek to impose global tyranny. We will never go gently into the dark night of tyranny plans for us by the multinational corporations who control government, never. by the European Union which aids and abets the destruction of democracy and liberty, and by the quizzlings of the Irish state who have become the enemies of the people. We must go forth from here with a firm purpose of intention that Ireland will have, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, a new dawn of liberty, a new birth of freedom, and a new flourishing of nationhood. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Michael. It's Michael Leahy there. And uh, Michael Leahy from the Irish Freedom Party. Uh, so there is welcome various groups. Uh, uh, we're all welcome here today. Uh, I know Derek Bly has said he would like to be here, but he had a family, uh, a family matter on uh, some sort of function down in Cork. And uh, Malachy Steenson said he'd, he'd li like to get here as well. He wanted to talk. I wonder, is Malachy here? Does anyone know? Uh, just if Malachy's here, anyone else? Uh, uh, or the, the, yeah. Uh, I, our next speaker will be another courageous uh, doctor who stood up to their eyes and uh, spoke out, would not be silenced. And that's Dr. Vincent Cow. <laughs> it who fears honesty? Who is it who fears truthfulness? Who is it who fears open debate? Who is it who fears free speech? It is the government and the fake opposition. I don't fear free speech. I welcome free speech. But I am opposed to compel speech. Where somebody tells me what to say, where somebody tells me what to write, where somebody tells me what boards I may or may not display. And ultimately, somebody will try to tell me what to think, but they will not succeed. They will not do so because I am a free and sovereign person. No, no, no. But make no mistake about it, our country is facing into dark days and dark times because not everybody is a free-born citizen. You have slaves in this country, slaves to the EU, slaves to the WHO, slaves to the UN, slaves to every globalist body you can think of and all of them want to do one thing to reduce all nations, free nations, to a common soup, a common mess, a common bob. Ireland's historic, Ireland is free and shall remain. For hundreds and hundreds of years, as a nation, as a people, as a society, we've stood together, bound together, worked together, fought together, and we have come out as a free and independent nation, a shining light to the rest of the world, and there are those who want to destroy that, but I pledge my lo loyalty to this dear nation, and I give her my love, and I shall, as a free-born citizen, fight to defend her. Let, little by little by little our country has been dismantled a fragile population maybe five million people with a vibrant and dispersed diaspora but still in the overall scheme of things relatively small we're a fragile culture and a fragile nation population wise and the attempt has been made to effectively dilute us dismantle us they will not succeed I will say this now because there will be an attempt to prevent me saying this later on if these free speech laws are passed, hate speech laws, but I tell you this much, I'm going to ignore them because I know what I think and I know what I say.
but I am aware. I am aware in the 16th century of the plantation of Leash Offaly, then the plantation of Munster, then the plantation of Ulster, and now there is the final plantation of Ireland. Resist! Quote, we are unique in Europe for the wrong reasons as well. And the wrong reasons are that we do not have a visible, viable opposition that is represented in Parliament to any significant extent. We have fake opposition parties. We have those that have betrayed us. Those parties are in bed with government. Come out and be honest about it. You're one and the same and we reject you. As I've said, as I've said at a previous meeting, two miles from here there is a prison, and as referred to by Michael there, there is a man in that prison, not for what he did, but for what he said or refused to say, that is compelled speech. And when these new laws come in, in my pocket this morning I grabbed from my surgery table a copy of the proclamation where it says that the Irish nation belongs to the Irish people. Are we able to say that with free speech? One minute. I also took out a copy of the Holy Bible and I'm wondering, I am wondering well, if, if, if a clergyman occupies a pulpit on a Sunday and says about male and female, is that, a, is that hate speech as well? And if it's not, you will have to prove it's not. You prove you're innocent. That's nonsense. If you each should prove, we should be proven we're guilty, not the other way around. So, friends, colleagues, patriots, I say in these dark days, we need to stand together. We need to unite. We need to fight together. We we need to support each other. All to victory, 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 and victory. Thank you very much. Yay! Right. Okay, folks. We have another a great one here, a great warrior for Ireland. She didn't want an introduction, but I'm going to give her one anyway. She was with us still uh, when we were in Barrett Street. A few years ago, fighting Google and the oppression. And that's Julie Phibbs. Okay, welcome, Julie. It's great to see so many people from those times still with us. Keep going, folks, so we build up the numbers. I see the count there. Great man. Oh, there's so many of us here. But uh, Peter there, and I'm going to give you Julie Phibbs now. She's written, uh, she's written a piece for today, so I'll ask you just to maybe be silent and uh, l listen clearly and reflect on what she has to say. I haven't heard it myself yet. Thank you very much. Here's Julie. Round of applause. Hi everyone. I, I've just written down a few words because uh, I've a head like a sieve, so I hope you don't mind me reading it out directly. Um, just to say that it is really a dire reflection on today's society when we find ourselves here on the streets having to fight a tyrannical regime who seek to silence and control the voices of the decent women and men and children of this country. These government imposters want to steal and erode our God-given right to speak and question freely. The government of this nation has, it would appear, gone rogue and no longer genuinely work for the Irish people. They now aim to silence anyone who questions their malicious agenda. Anyone who dares call them out on how they are violating our tiny island, our heritage, our culture, our health and our civil liberties. for their own gain, to push a destructive globalist agenda. They are truly the hateful ones. They are the ones who are the bullies and the cowards. They are the ones who grow fearful and have much 
much to hide as they realise that the Irish people are having a great awakening conversation, which grows louder daily. A conversation of truth is taking place on this island with the Irish public who are discovering what really lies beneath the filthy masks of a globalist government and its vile, self-serving propaganda. This is what this is really all about. They want to stop our conversation. They want to shut us up. They want us silenced as their lies and scams are exposed. Well, we will not be bullied. We will not be told what we can and can't say or what we can and can't think. We will not be threatened with farcical anti-free speech legislation. I stand here today because I have a message for the government and for every politician who should carefully consider whether they wish to stain their legacy with a dirty black mark of history should they cross the Irish people with this treasonous legislation. Hear this loud and clear. The more you try to silence us, the greater our voices will rise. The more, the more you try to impede our speech, the greater our voices will swell. We will speak with our hands. We will speak with our feet. We will speak with our actions. We will speak with our pens. And we will speak with our hearts. Yeah. The more we are threatened, the more powerful our voices will rise. Our voices and our words will call out loud and strong and reverberate deeply into the corridors of the future and will settle on the shoulders of generations of our descendants for many long years to come. Try to silence us and the voices will roar as a tsunami of sound back to the ghosts of our ancestors and wake them from their slumber to join us in our battle for speech and freedom. Nearly finished. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As a glorious and proud nation of poets, balladeers, storytellers, musicians and conversationists, we will not have our voices gagged or impeded. We will never accept this anti-free speech legislation. And they will never succeed in controlling our conversations. But the day is coming when the sound of silence will be welcomed. And that will be the day when the hiss of traitorous snakes and vile treachery no longer permeate the houses of power in this country. And what a, <laughs> and what a great conversation we will have as a nation on that day. Dia Ismera Erin. Thank you. strike. So on the um, on the 18th of, of November here, Paul Lennon was taken away under arrest. So he's um, a public order there, but uh, it was uh, uh, under unusual circumstances that he's now 16 days remaining in a cell and uh, under uh, abusive, uh, we'll say, experiencing an abusive situation there and uh, a, a breach of human rights, a breach of the, the prison service uh, charter uh, as well. So we're, we're rallying, again, rallying against that and trying to get some um, proper order out of them, really. Um, so, and we're trying to. Uh
trying to reassure him that we're out here trying to do something for him and that we hear him, that we hear his struggle and that it's, it's shocking that what's going on really, you know. So, um, so George Orwell said, um, if liberty means anything at all, it means, it means uh, anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Okay? Freedom would be mean, meaningless without security in the home and in the streets, you know. So where globalization means, um, like at the home strike, we, we were promoting um, uh, the, the uh, awareness of the, the WEF and Klaus Schwab. So if I had a penny or a, a hot dinner for every homeless person, uh, the amount of times I was asked about the World Economic Forum, uh, that would be a great thing. You know, so what globalization means, as it so often does, that the rich and powerful now have new means to further uh, enrich and empower themselves at the cost of the poor and, uh, and weaker. And uh, so, uh, so we have the responsibility to protest in the name of universal freedom. Okay? Universal freedom. We, what we need is a critical, independent, and investigative uh, press. In, in, it's the lifeblood of any democracy. And to weigh up the democracy versus what we have now, I don't know. It's a bit like it's a bit like uh, North Korea, really. What we have now, or what, what, what they're trying to bring in, should I say? So, so yeah, um, so. Where, where, Paul, where my comrade Paul is now, really, um, they have him where they want him because uh, fr um, only free men can negotiate. Prisoners cannot uh, enter into contracts. Your, your freedom and mine cannot be, cannot be separated. Nelson Mandela said that, but I, I think it applies to Paul. He can't negotiate where he is. I can in my own respect, but uh, they need to come to me and try and make an effort to negotiate, to actually hear us, because I had, we had two, uh, one uh, politician there that came down and made, made an appointment with us twice, and she failed on two occasions, a day after one another. I, I, she was a busy lady, obviously, but she didn't approach us in any past or even apologise for, for um, we set up a studio here, um, out in you know, in, in, in fresh air, we'll say, up outside here, out just right over there, and she knew where we were anyway, and uh, we just got the the small promise. But uh, so other people were um, have been uh, approached, and we await. I await their um, honest, uh, you know, uh, attention in the matter to house the Irish homeless, really, you know. So. At the end of the day, Paul was trying to uh, impress upon anyone who approached us that we need to believe in ourselves, we need to have faith in ourselves, we need to come together. So, if we need to have faith and believe in ourselves, uh, with this faith, we, 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 we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation and, and to unite, you know, uh, 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 in, into a beautiful sym symphony of brotherhood and sisterhood. And that needs to come back into this country, brotherhood and sisterhood, you know. and. We may have our faults with one another, but we, we have to see the wood for the trees, really, and to see the, the finish line, you know, to, to see the finish line, to have the freedom of speech, and to, to have the, our demands met, and to have the, the, the homeless, uh, the Irish homeless, you know, uh, housed. So, thank you very much, right? Thank you. Stephen! 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 Uh, thanks for all your attention, folks. That's a dreadful situation there. Um, that Linda has just uh, spoken to you about. Uh, I, I, uh, listen, I know we, we're all sick of listening to speeches. I know how many times we said it. What are we going to do next, right? But uh, we have our free speech, and I have a couple of great speakers here today, you know. And uh, a lot of people have come to listen to them, so... Um, I'm going to introduce you another one. We don't want to just listen to speech after speech, but we... What? Yeah, and, and it's here. We've Anne McCluskey. We have great people, you know. Uh, we, we can't fit everyone. Etna Brannigan, we have Etna here. Etna's a vaccine-injured person, you know. And she'd like to speak on behalf of those who have been uh, injured by the gene therapy. Of course, it's not... So I'm not sure if we're going to get a chance to do all that, you know. But... Um, so, uh, also I want to mention, Polly mentioned it to me there, that they, uh, the treaty that was signed in 1922, that it, apparently it runs out, it's a 100 year treaty, and it runs out next week. <laughs> On the 6th of, September, of December, okay? So now, a lot of you know, it's something worth looking into, guys, I don't know all the details, but I know uh, 
with a solar pump in 1922. And the regime kept in control. We never got our country. It was the international bankers kept running this country. The crown doll. So we're seven people. But anyway, we have a great man here. Stephen Manning of the, the uh, organizer, administrator of Integrity Island. And I know an awful lot of people have the highest respect for this man because uh, it's my opinion anyway, he's a man of great integrity and I'm delighted he could come and talk to us here. Thanks, Stephen. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, well, first of all, uh, thanks for the flattering introduction. Uh, secondly, uh, those of you who took part in the race, yeah, well done for still being here. We, we lost about... We not only lost the guards, we lost two-thirds of the tail end of the, of the demonstration. But um, anyway, we're learning as we go along. Next time it'll be a bit slower at the front and whatever, okay? But it was very effective, guys. We passed a lot of people. A lot of people in the shops and the pubs are watching. They're paying attention, right? And somewhat interestingly, this is what this is all about. Now, you, you get people like myself and other good speakers up here sharing their views with you okay and and we look up to these people and we admire them and so on that's all wonderful but the whole concept here guys and the whole idea of free speech is that we're able to generate this sort of um facility in everybody all right it's not about looking up to who's going to be the next leaders who's going to be the next political party and things like that more so empower yourselves okay and you you see what happens yeah you see what happens when you stand up for yourself now my, my position here, guys, I like to try and share the what I call the bigger picture notion, okay? We're all looking at the symptoms of a very, very serious worldwide global problem, right? And the symptoms range all the way from the, let's call them the injectables, yeah, to these new acts and laws coming in. And we've got to understand the motivation behind it. And I'm going to say something here that some of you might so sound as a little bit complicated and a bit strange, but I want you to perhaps go away and think about it later, okay? The problem we're facing is institutionalized human evil, okay? Now, by institutions, I just want you to think of pyramid structures where you have a boss or a CEO or a government minister or whatever it is at the top dictating downwards to people and anybody in that organization or subject to it must obey right this is what we're seeing guys all right except it's happening on a global scale at the moment all right this is not the natural way of things and even if you're not a religious person even if you don't understand the notion of spirit or soul the fact is you do have a soul you have a conscience we have a stage a sense of morality that animals do not have that's why there's a difference between human beings and beasts. Lovely beasts with characters and personalities, your pet dog, whatever it might be, but they don't make moral decisions. We do. And if you abandon that morality in order to be subject to the so-called authorities, you are, in effect, selling your soul. Now, I know these are strong, tough words, guys, but this is the way that uh, humanity has evolved ever since... The crime of Cain killing Abel, believe it or not. We've had the macho males, the biggest, the strongest, the most authoritarian, the, the people with the most soldiers, the ones who are prepared to be most violent, most ruthless, and they have dominated all of these institutions that we take for granted. We're born into them, after all. Why wouldn't we take them for granted? We've got to start thinking differently, guys, okay? All right? This is about concept, plan, and action. Everybody wants to act right now because we're all frustrated, we're angry, we don't like to see what's going on, and we're moving to action. But what I'm saying is, no, before we move to action, we need to have a plan. And before we have a plan, we have to understand the concept, all right? And the concept here is that a international cabal of connected elites, call them what you like, yeah, um, have, over the last few decades, they've managed to position themselves in a place where they can absolutely dictate to the rest, the whole of global humanity, uh, their particular agenda. And it is not a good agenda. Are we all right, guys? Yeah? Yeah. Um, so if I, leave you, if I leave you just with this idea, guys. Sorry, I'm, we're having some speaker problems. Is it okay? I'm sorry, yeah. Um, Individual people have consciences, and you have the right, you have the God-given divine right to act upon your conscience. 
the, the idea of free speech is that we better inform our consciences through fruitful debate. Even the people that were out here earlier today blowing their whistles and doing duck squawks and all the rest of it, which technically isn't free speech because they're whistling and squawking. But I went, I went over to them and I said, look guys, and they were shouting and lambasting and calling us names. I said, no, no, no guys, this is a free speech rally. And they went on and on. I said, look, would you like a spot? Do you want to come on up? And then we were going to invite all of you to respectfully listen to what they had to say. All right? That's how the right and the wrongs come to the surface through debate, through intelligent debate, okay? Not through authoritarian diktats that tell us what we can and cannot think. Okay, guys? We have to grow up. There has been a general uh, attitude of gross ignorance all across the globe, and myself included. It's taken me the best part of 25 years to learn some of this stuff, yeah? And I've only done it because I keep battling and I felt, I felt in myself the need to stand up for what was right, okay? We all owe it to each other to think and take command and take control of our lives. Don't forget, you're looking at the so-called authorities. The so-called authorities are civil servants and public servants. The key word to note there is servants. What are we doing allowing the servants to tell us what to do? Yeah? And the last point I'll make, yeah, the last point I'll make, guys, everybody's waiting for the next political party to come along, you know, and they'll be good guys and they'll save us and so on. What I'm telling you guys, and I do want you to try and think about this, it's the structures themselves lend themselves to authoritarianism, okay? They lend themselves, you end up always with one capo, one boss at the top, and even people who are elected, promising their, uh, their constituents on the ground, they'll do this, that and the other, as soon as they're in power, and bear in mind, four days of democracy we have guys, four days while we vote. That's even if we can trust the collection, the vote collection process. After that, they do what they bloody well like, yeah? And there's no accountability, there's no way to hold them account. And don't talk about the courts, don't talk about the judges, it's all the same, guys, all right? So we have to learn to take back the authority and power, do whatever you can to disengage from these diabolical systems, including making your voice heard when they try to curtail our freedom of speech. Thank you very much, guys. We gotta fight, eh? We need an army, eh? So we need an army. We want you fighting fit. I tell you, which I wasn't happy with you today. You weren't loud enough at all. Stop practicing in your kitchens at home. Show it the wall. Tell them you're not gonna take it, right? So listen, we got up the game, right? We're dealing with absolute tyrants, and they're not gonna back down. They're gonna have to knock them down, okay? Let's do it. Now I got here two more speakers here. Uh, I'm going to be a royal man, Melissa O'Neill, and after that, Andy Heesman. And uh, we've had some other speakers, and unfortunately, we couldn't get to everyone here today. Uh, I don't think Edna there, but uh, we've just got to remember the people that have been damaged through this whole COVID operation. It's shocking what's happened, you know, and, and dead, all the dead. In fact, um, it might take a minute, uh, just take a moment, 30 seconds of reflection on all the tragedy that has befallen on so many and for so long. Please, if you don't mind, 30 seconds. It uh, doesn't bear thinking about it, I'm afraid, folks, you know. The tragedy that has, has befallen the world, to be honest with you, you know. But at least the great, uh, the great joy is that we're aware to the, awake to the tragedy now of what has been hidden for so long. And we've seen behind the curtain that we can do something about it, you know. You can never under, unsee what, what you, when you've seen what's behind the curtain. So um, I'll uh, I invite Melissa uh, O'Neill here, uh, 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 another sovereign Irish woman, proud, proud Irish woman. Manana Heron, count them to Manana Heron. Ben Osiron, okay. Diego de Corda, this is our era. We are here today to give a very loud and clear message to Ungardi over there, to the gangsters in Leinster House, 
that we are here and we have a fundamental right to the freedom of speech, to the freedom of expression, to the freedom of our thoughts, to the freedom of our sovereignty, and most and foremost, to the freedom of our neutrality. The freedom of our safe communities, the freedom of the education that we want for our children, not what someone over in America has decided. The freedom of our religious rights, the freedom of our moral beliefs, the freedom for life from the cradle to the grave. And we are here to give a very clear message. We are not far right. We have been right so far. Yeah. Ireland is under no obligation to take any refugees. The gangsters in Leinster House signed us up voluntarily without the voice of the people of this country. We Irish Freedom Party are calling for a referendum to opt out. And we have a right to opt out. We may be the land of a thousand welcomes, but Ireland is now full. Just to give you an idea, the 